It's the Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. Um, Time for us to check out the papers this morning. As always, we'll take you through the front pages of our national dailies. We have uh, Tunde Kolawale who joins the conversation. Tunde Kolawale, it's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, my sister. Thanks for having me. That's all right. A delight to have you. Um, We start off with uh, the leadership. Looking at the front page of the leadership, 30 days to INEC deadline on flag bearers, southern governors insist on power shift to south. It's boldly written on the paper of uh, talking about the leadership. Says it's our turn to produce next president. Warns party to avoid self-inflicted crisis. Don't create tension over zoning. Northern elders reply. Civil society organization back governor's insistent southern president. Fire me set to declare today. Because uh, the governor of Ikiti State, away from that, resignation, obey section 84 of Electoral Act, lawyers tell appointees. And you have eight banks paid 2.8 billion naira for regulatory infrastructure infractions i beg to take that again eight banks paid 2.8 billion naira for regulatory infractions in 2021 and humanitarian crisis antonio Guterres six assistance for burn new state you also have another security challenge in security please review forensic labs and criminal database and DLAE traces 22 billion tramadol imports to Baron linked to Abakiari. I mean, was part of our conversation uh, on top trending this morning. And what's these ahead for bandits, terrorists, military vows? I mean, the same military that's also been indicted for working um, with these terrorists and bandits, however you want to put it. Uh, but that's the much we can take this morning on uh, the leadership newspaper. Away from the leadership, we'll move on next to the Nigerian Tribune. Plots to jettison zoning, Akira Dolundome, Kokori, Bamidele, others won APC. Uh, with some writers there, this is certainly no, not the time for equivocation. Akira Dolu is quoted on that. If APC fields Northern candidate, that will be tantamount to third term in Dome. It will be suicidal if it goes to the north again, Kokori. Student protest over prolonged ASU strike. Family accuses police of torturing son to death in Ogun State. UN Secretary General in Nigeria visits Rehabilitation Center, IDP camp. Murder of two soldiers by IPOB ESN Carlos Ami. PP 50 passengers rescued after fire got aircraft tires at Port Hackett Airport. My APC Southwest leaders to meet Tinubu Ashibajo, Fire Mia Mosul uh, this week. Next decision on zoning uh, can go either way, PDP, as party stakeholders prepare for crunch meeting. Private sector invests $67.2 billion in low middle income countries. That's according to the World Bank. Lawekbo Hashim, the class presidential ambition, says new, better Nigeria possible. Fire me, Akbabio, joint presidential race declare today. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Tribune this morning. We'll move away from the Tribune quickly and uh, let's also check out the Daily Independent newspaper. PDP governors kick as a Tiku plans to retain power. Uh, retain Peter B as running mate. I mean, of course, if you, if you talk about that in a sentence, you probably want to talk about power. PDP kicks as the Tiku plans to retain Peter B as running mate, 2023 presidency. Uh, this is uh, what you find this morning. It's the board caption for the Daily Independent. 1.12 trillion naira food import bill. Stakeholders urge federal government to tackle insecurity and low purchasing power. It's uh, boldly written. Nance wants politicians to be civil as 2023 polls approaches. Mm. 
Hold public officer accountable if Nigeria must move forward, Amici tells journalists. Hold public officers accountable if Nigeria must move forward, Amici tells journalists. We also need to look at uh, the light of having a strong institutions. No section of Nigeria should have domineering advantage over others. Senator Bami Dele is quoted. God will handle any southern governor or ex-governor who accepts vice president. I couldn't help but, you know, just smile at that. You have Edwin Clark, a statesman, uh, quoted on that one. It's time for South to produce president. Uh, Kerry Dolu wants APC chair and others. But you know the conversation of whether or not does, we should produce the North or the South. But you know in the South you have the Southwest and the Southeast. South South South. So it, it, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's a very interesting um, election year for us, 2023. But that's the much we can take on the Daily Independent. And the last paper we are reviewing this morning is the Punch newspaper. Dumping rotational presidency will cause crisis, according to Lou Senators. It's South's turn to produce president on the governor wants APC. Akonde, Oshoba, Tinubu, Oshibajo, and also others meet Friday over Southwest candidacy. Ondo governor threatens democracy, CNG, fire me, Olawipo Hashim join race, Nigerians to pay more as GSM operators plan 40% tariff hike. Activists threaten to sue Buhari over NIS boss tenure extension. Power firm O Banks, 861.14 billion naira amid Western electricity crisis. MKO Abiola Son asks Buhari to probe father's death. Ranching orders will deliver two trillion naira return on investment. That's according to the federal government. Fertilizer shortage. Nigeria imports Canadian potash to replace Russian supply. UN Secretary General Guterres in Nigeria to meet Buhari. Ogun police torture. Uh, motorcyclist to death family demands justice. How Lagos building collapsed on praying grandma, businessman searching for apartment. Federal government keeps train hostages, families in the dark. Victims spend 36 days in terrorists' den. All right, activists threatened to sue Buhari over NIS bus tenure extension. And uh, those are the bulk of the stories on the Punch newspaper this Let, morning. Let's have Tunde Kola Willie join the conversation. He's a legal practitioner. Tunde, once again, thank you yeah. for joining us and being part of the breakfast. It's a pleasure being on the platform with you. So let's get straight to the conversation this morning. On the leadership, you have um, just 30 days to INEC deadline. Uh, for flag bearers, the southern governors are insisting on power shift to the south. What are your thoughts on this one, especially when you have uh, the dominant political parties almost silent on the issue of zoning? Mm. Honestly, I sympathize uh, with the Koloko idea of the southern governors. But we must always remember that this rotational thing a rotational pact is a gentlemanly agreement. It is not enforceable as such. We must also remember that politics is based on statistics, based on hard facts, is based on concrete figures, and not emotional or moral situation as the southern government has been putting it. The northern part of the country has 12,000 solid votes which no political party can ignore. And then when you look at the southern governors, they have, I think, about maybe about nine or 10 million solid votes. So if you were going to be taken into consideration, the chances of any political party winning the next election, especially at the presidential level, you cannot ignore. That's very, very hard uh, uh, statistics. We should also remember 
that most of the southern uh, people who have been president or head of state have only gotten there by default. Taguye Rosi got there when uh, Tafa Balewa, when the, the coup took place in 1966, and Tafa Balewa was uh, killed. And then, of course, too, Obasanjo got there by default as a military head of state, and then uh, as uh, a civilian president. Without what happened to Abiola, Obasanjo could not have become president. So when you also look at um, most people who have held some of these very important positions, they have always gotten it on the benevolence of um, the Northern Allies. What the Southern Allies should be doing is really to lobby, is to negotiate, is to parley, is to persuade the Northern, the Northern Allies and Northern politicians to concede the presidency to them for the peace, stability, and unity of the country. All this rancorous noise that they are making on the pages of newspaper, we take them nowhere. In fact, the less they talk about it, the more they do underground negotiations, persuasion, and the nothing, the better for them. Because they now hold the numerical strength as regards who becomes the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But of course, hey, I must be emphasized Chunde that Kala I Wale. don't believe in rotational presidency. Chunde Kala Wale, yeah. would you say that this yeah. um, negotiations and conversations and persuasion that you have mentioned should happen within the political party? Uh, it should just happen, you know, outside of political party? Because both, I both, mean, both, both. It should happen within the political party and also the leaders of thought the urban, the obese in southern Nigeria, who also negotiate with their colleagues in the northern part of the country, who again concede the presidency to them. That would be the best thing. Not oh, just but but the should they negotiate? Because, because mm, when mm. you mention this conversation, I mean, I really don't understand, and I'm also trying to understand, that if you say yeah. that it's a gentleman's agreement, and over time yeah. this agreement has been going on, all of a sudden... Um, you know, something is different. Then we realize that uh, we need to pay attention to the issue of um, competence. We need to look at who can deliver exactly. Nigeria from where they are. And exactly. that's all of a sudden because it comes to the turn of another person. Does this really, really even make sense? Well, you see, the political permutation on ground today doesn't favor this rotational presidency that the leading parties and the southern politicians are talking about. Like I said, the APC is afraid now that if the PDP picks its uh, presidential candidate from the north, the possibility is that the northern people, with their solid 12 million votes, will rally around and vote for that person is very, very high. So the APC is victory about picking a southern candidate with Pachan the PDP picks a northern candidate. The PDP too is still free that if the APC picks a northern candidate, it will be difficult for them to return to power if they don't pick a candidate from the northern part of the country. That is the core reality on ground now. And not what we had in 2019, 2015, 2007, and 2011. I honestly believe that they can still negotiate with the people from the northern part of the country. After all, I've seen some Northern allies who are sympathetic to the rotation of power to the South. There are some hot heads who wouldn't want power to rotate. But this uh, take, negotiations and lobbying, that is how politics is done. You lobby, you negotiate, you party, you persuade. Right. Uh... Not to start beating your chest that uh, this thing should be given to you on the part of gold. All right, but you're still going to let us move on to other stories uh, also All making right. headlines. Uh, let's uh, go to the Daily Independent newspaper. The lead story yeah. is still on um, the 2023 presidency, and this time around PDP yeah. is in the news. And PDP governors are kicking as uh, the former vice president, Tiku Abubakar, is planning to retain uh, Peter Obi as running mate. How do you see that combination? That's for the first um, angle. Then secondly, uh, 
what will it actually you know, do for the chances of the party? Well, if that happens, it will be a very solid um, uh, plan or, or kind of uh, good strategy to really get the presidency for the PDP. Uh, give it to him. Atiku is a veteran of Nigerian politics. He knows the terrain very well. And he also has the resources and all that. And then when you look at Mr. Obi, he's also proven himself to be a very, very good uh, a businessman. He is also on his side. And with the clamor of his people that um, the South East should be given the presidency, if they don't get the presidency, and at the end of the day, they get the vice presidency, that might, in a way, kind of uh, be a little compensation, even though not a good compensation for the people of the Southeast. I think Atiku is also looking at the geometric of the voting population that we have in the country. If that fact with Obi works out, the Southwest will be totally a host. They will be a cut off. They will find it difficult to really make impact or to be able to succeed in getting the presidency, either on the platform of the, I mean, on the platform of the APC or any of these other political parties and all that. I think I think we're mainly looking at the political reality on ground. Whether you will be able to persuade OP to accept that is a different thing because OP is also looking at his own. He's looking at what his people are saying. He's also considering what the Igbos will want. So he will not want to be seen as a renegade by his Igbo brothers. So to that extent, it's a very, very complicated one. But I see it as a master stroke that can give the PDP the presidency from the 2023 election. Well, let's share your thoughts on this one. Uh, Form is shocking. NDLEA traces 22 billion naira tramadol import to Baron linked to Abakiari, the super cop. What are your thoughts? And do you think that Nigerians are top of, you know, the fight against uh, drugs and the use of drugs? Well, mm, I'm not in support of a drug. Uh, the drug destroys the youth and it destroys the society. I go around the court almost on a daily basis. I go to court almost on a daily basis. And I've seen the ravages that drug is doing to the youth of this country and even to some uh, uh, older uh, people. So I don't support a drug. But the noise that the NDLA is making over this drug baron thing, I really have my doubts. Why do I say this? Tramadol is not the same thing as cocaine. It's not the same thing as India hemp. It's also not the same thing as uh, some of these other drugs like heroin and what have you. Tramadol is a legitimate drug that pharmacies and medical doctors sometimes prescribe for people as a painkiller. So when you begin to accuse a man or a businessman for importing tramadol and you continue to label him as a drug bearer, I have my worries. He could be accused of importing tramadol, maybe without passing the due process. But a tramadol importer or somebody who brings in tramadol into the country, that really should not be described as a drug bearer because drugs, like I say, tramadol is not heroin, it's not uh, cocaine, it is not a uh, cannabis. Furthermore, they use mainly abuse it, they mix it with some other things and all that to get whatever resource uh, uh, that they want. So the NDLA should address the issue the way and manner it should be addressed in a proper manner. If a man has illegitimately imported a, um, a drug that should not ordinarily be sold on the counter, let us address it that way and not label him as a drug bureau. Furthermore, uh, with the things they say they are trade and what have you, it further reinforces what we have always said all this while that most of uh, the, let's say the Nigerian police. And then the PSA, the state security services and all that. Those organizations have been kind of um, infiltrated by kid columnists who are using the taxpayers' money, who are using money bought, the guns bought by the taxpayers to perpetrate nefarious activities uh, all over the country. 
In fact, you could describe it that those places have become ten of rubber and ten of drug barons and all that. So what requires to be done is that the Nigerian police will require to do out cleansing. It also requires to do a kind of uh, due diligence on the rank and file of people in the police force. This one for the GFS. Because I asked myself, is it possible for Bakiyari and one other two persons to have perpetrated this monumental thing of fraud that uh, they have been accused of? It's not possible. They would have been making return to certain people. Certain senior officers within the rank and file would have known about this thing. They would have benefited from it. So we need a total overhaul. All right. Security All right, Barista the police and the GSS. Um, uh, on the Nigerian Tribune this morning, yeah. also making headline above the masthead, a governor from AKT State, Karade Fayemi, and of course former governor from Akwai from State, Akpabio, uh, have joined the presidential race. Uh, they are declaring today. How does that hit you? Well, uh, the two gentlemen in Maumbulu, you know, have the right to acquire to become the president of Nigeria. I know Asadio as a lawyer, and I think Fayemi as an historian. Uh, both gentlemen are well educated. They have also had a legal site exposure uh, to aspire to some of these offices. But the challenge I have with them, or the reservations I have with these two people is, uh, what can you point to as landmark achievement for, for Asadio? In all the eight years that he ruled as the governor of Akwai Bomb State, rather, with due respect, he was a led to have a perfected kleptocracy and then cruising around in uh, private jets. I think he bought about two. The salary of the governor is not enough to buy a Rolls Royce. How he got the money to buy two uh, private jets to be cruising around with, he beats my imagination. In fact, there was a time he had an accident. I mean, Atadio in Abuja, and then the papers were reporting it that Atadio has been flown abroad in his favorite private jet, a bombardier, uh, something, something. And I laughed. A governor, a poor lawyer who was working with us in Lagos State, after four years of governorship, can now avoid two private jets. That will only happen in Nigeria. For fire me, my reservations with him is that. Uh, his own performance as a state governor, his performance as minister of solid minerals and water food, is also not as far with his high intellect, with the social he has had. And uh, if you have been given such an opportunity, I mean, to whom much is given, much is also expected. Ekiti, as we are talking today, is in areas of rain. The schools are in poor and dilapidated conditions. And not, uh, they say the money stays more in Abuja that like it is say where is a governor. And then furthermore, fire me and go apart and pass of the rot, of the non-performance, of the catastrophic outing of the APC. So we also share part of the blame. So when I see this kind of uh, character coming up to say that they now want to be our redeemer, they want to be the salvationist and all that, I smile on moral ground, uh, ethically, and due to their performances, I don't think these people should have the moral courage to say they want to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The performance of IME, especially with regards to economics, is atrocious. It's quite interesting to see that you have a lot of, I mean, you have, if you look at the governors from the APC, it feels like we're in an area where you have. Uh, a lot of governors wanting to become president. It's quite interesting. And one is wondering uh, what is really going on in the APC. We look forward to having more governors coming out to uh, make their intentions known to become uh, or joining the race for 2023. But just quickly on this one, it's under leadership. It talks about resignation. And you have obey section 84 of electoral acts. This is what lawyers are saying to uh, political appointees. What are your thoughts? The whole back and forth. I mean, you have uh, these lawyers and some persons, I mean, appointees saying, we what? will not, we, we cannot. So there's a back and forth with this. What's the way forward? Do you think they should obey it? Um, what if they don't obey it? What happens? Well, before I address your question, let me quickly um, 
keep in one or two things. With regards to most governors wanting to become president, I think it is a natural graduation. When you look at the place like the U.S., most people who are prior to become president are those who have either been governors or have been senators in different states uh, in the U.S. As to um, what is the second question you asked me? The, hello, Matthew. Yes. The second question you asked me. It's about resignation. And lawyers are asking okay. the political well, appointees to obey Section well, 84 of the Electoral Act okay. as amended 2022. All right, all right. Okay, that tells you how greedy some of these politicians might be. They want to eat their cake and still have it. The, the law has been made, even though it's still being contested. It would have been fairer for those political appointees to resign. So as not to jeopardize not just their own chance, but the chances of the party if they go into the election. Because if by chance, any of them wins the primary of their respective political parties. And that law that has been made by the National Assembly is offered by the Supreme Court. Then whatever victory that their party or the individual may have at the presidential election, any election for that matter, will be nullified by the court. So it is said that for those people, political office uh, appointees, to resign their appointment so as not to jeopardize their own chances when they win the election and the chances of their respective political parties if eventually they get uh, uh, elected. For people who are holding such offices to still continue to hold on to them and then they still say they want to uh, contest election, what time will they even have to move around? to mobilize, to do underground consultation, to campaign for the offices that they want. Then what is the possibility that they will not be using the nation's resources, that they will not be using the resources in their respective ministries, in their respective uh, parastatas, to power their elections? I suspect it is to prevent political office holders from using the machineries of government, the resources of the people, to run for elections, that the National Assembly made that law. And I think the law is well made. All right, thank you so much, Barista Tunde Kualawali, for all the thought and analysis that you have given to the front um, pages and the stories that made them the front pages this morning. We do appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being there for me. All right, thank, are messy. All right thank you so much, uh, Tunde Kualawali. We it's appreciate pleasure. your time. And we move away from the paper review. Definitely return tomorrow with more interesting headlines. But in the meantime, let's tell you what happened today in history. We'll be right back looking at our first major conversation. Stay with us.